On this week's edition of the Left Bench TV, the Terps' new offense was on full display at the spring game. A top 10 showdown for Maryland men's lacrosse with a close finish. And a new all-time leading scorer in Maryland women's lacrosse history. The Left Bench TV starts now. in College Park. Welcome to Left Bench TV. I'm Nolan Gelbard. And I'm Makaya Cherry. It's finally getting warm in College Park just in time for Maryland's annual red and white spring football game where the Terps showcased their new offense and a transfer student gave Terp fans something to look forward to. Our Morgan Weaver was there with the coverage. For the first time since the disappointing 4-8 2017 season, the Maryland football team took the field. Recently hired offensive coordinator Matt Canada is bringing a new offense from LSU that relies on pre-snap motion. Now he's a real cool guy, you know what I'm saying? He's kind of more laid back, more chill. He's a real dude, like he's straight up. He lets you know how I feel about what, what we got going on moving forward, and I, I respect that about him. Junior running back Jake Funk had no problem with the new offense, leading the Terps with two touchdowns on back-to-back -back possessions. Offensively really allows for a guy to, to create a role for himself and. and being multiple in our personnel and our formations and what we do, you know, if you have certain strengths that those show and we can find a way to utilize you. And, and Jake obviously has a nose for the end zone. He's, he's a terrific running back. So I, I think it'd be great. Jake has always been such a big contributor, special teams wise for us. And I think you'll see his role increasing more and more. And Along with the new offense, Maryland fans got to see a fresh face put on a show today. Redshirt junior Florida State transfer Marcus Lewis made his first big play as a Terp, picking off freshman Tyler DeSue and taking it 47 yards for a touchdown. We got to be outside I just broke on the ball, I saw it, and uh, that was kind of it. But um, yeah, it, was, it felt good to get in the end zone. Though. Always being curious and asking questions, I think it also encourages the younger guys to do the same. So um, I think he just he brings um, another aspect of leadership to it. To, to the room. In a crowded backfield that includes Ty Johnson, Lorenzo Harrison, and Jake Funk, one running back separated himself Saturday. Anthony McFarlane looks to make his debut this season after redshirting his freshman year. Our room is really deep, obviously. Um, we got a lot of good guys, and I think being able to just rotate fresh guys and having all the running backs be able to play different positions that aren't necessarily your your running back position um, really just helps our offense. I mean, we got our playmakers on the field, and um, you know, we just we do what we do. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Morgan Weaver. A spring game with no injuries was a Maryland victory, but on Friday, Kevin Anderson, Maryland's athletic director, resigned after seven years. He took a sabbatical leave in October. Some of his highlights include the hiring of Mark Turgeon and DJ Durkin. He was also at Maryland during the transition into the Big Ten. The number one ranked men's lacrosse team had a tough challenge Sunday for the Big Ten home opener, facing off against number eight ranked Rutgers. I was able to head down to Capital One Field for all the coverage. The Terrapins versus the Scarlet Knights in Maryland's Big Ten home opener. First quarter, Connor Kelly finds Jared Bernhardt for the first goal of the game, and Maryland did not slow down. This time, Kelly finds Bubba Fairman who fires it to the back of the net. Turks would end up taking a 5-1 lead. But then came the Scarlet Knights. Jules Hennenberg with great awareness to find Christian Mazzone by the net for the score. Rutgers starting to trim the lead. Next, Hennenberg again, this time finding Kieran Mullins. This goal ties the game and we head to the half knotted up at five. Rutgers would gain a lead, but Maryland fought back. Watch this spin move and rifle from Fairman. The freshman finished with three goals on the day. Then, late in the game, Tim Rotans breaks the tie with his bounce shot and Maryland did not look back. They take this one 11-10. You know, we, uh, we focused in on halftime, just trying to move the ball and, you know, share the ball and get the ball moving. I thought it, we played a little slow in the first half, and I thought we did a great job coming into the fourth quarter after uh, last week playing Penn State. I thought that prepared us uh, greatly for this uh, game, so it was huge for us. The Turfs have just two more games before postseason play, both conference matchups against Ohio State and Johns Hopkins. They will try for another championship, but first, here to discuss a Turfs team that did just win a conference title, Juan Herrera. So Juan, give us the update on this Terrapin team that has been dominant so far. Sure. So early last week, a University of Maryland athletics team picked up a major championship in the Big Ten Conference. And no, it wasn't in basketball, soccer, or football. 
It was off the field and in a popular video game. The Terps knocked off Illinois to win this year's Big Ten League of Legends championship. It's the second straight year Maryland has beaten Illinois for the conference championship in League of Legends. And according to the Big Ten, this year's title match brought in over 21,000 viewers, a 163% increase in viewership from last year's championship. With audience interest growing in the competition, let's hope that the Terps can continue their dominance in League of Legends, and let's hope some of their success can rub off on the other teams around campus. Yeah, a couple of teams on campus that can use that success, mm -hmm. baseball and softball. Oh yeah, it would be great to have it go around. They both went winless this weekend, falling to Big Ten opponents. Let's start with baseball. As they hit the road, coming off a non-conference win to face the Michigan Wolverines in Ann Arbor. In game one, the Terps were without starting pitcher Taylor Bloom due to an injury during warm-ups. His absence was felt as Michigan dominated from the beginning, scoring four runs in the first off of Mike Vastura, who made his second career start. The Terps were able to get some offense going behind a Marty Costas double, but it was not enough as the Terps fell to Michigan in the opener 10-4. They only played one more game due to weather and it was more of the same. Game two starter Tyler Blome pitched for one inning but left the game due to an arm injury. But the Terps did score first. After a solo home run from Taylor Wright, the Wolverines countered with four runs and never looked back, beating the Terps 6-3. Baseball did struggle this weekend, Nolan, but so did softball. To say the least, Terps taking on Indiana in the doubleheader looking to avenge Friday's loss. After falling behind 3-0 in game one, Hannah Eslick pinch hits with the bases loaded and rips a shot to deep left field. This bases clear and triple ties up the game at three. But to the six we go and Indiana's offense took over. It began with this RBI single from Bella Norton and they could not be stopped. They hit three long bombs in the game, including this three run shot from Matty Westmoreland. The Hoosiers offense was just too much for the Terps to handle and they take game one of the doubleheader nine to three. Round two and Indiana jumped out to a 2-0 lead. Jackie Pasquale rips an RBI single down the line and tries to keep things close. However, Maryland could barely get a hit off Tara Trainer. The Hoosier pitcher finished with 16 strikeouts on the weekend. And once again, the Hoosiers offense exploded. Maryland just could not find an answer for it. The Hoosiers win game two, nine to one, and complete the series sweep of Maryland. Things didn't go so hot for Maryland baseball or softball over the weekend. Our very own Ryan Homer and Zach Solon are here in the studio with Annabelle Jansen to talk about what we can expect from these two teams as the season continues. Annabelle? Yes, Nolan. Maryland baseball and softball struggled a lot over this weekend. What's been going on with the softball team's defense? There's just been a lot of miscommunication, especially between the middle infielders. Shortstop Michaela Wirahiko and uh, second baseman Sky Elazar had some issues in the Indiana series this past weekend. But as the weather gets nicer, they get more reps outside and not in the cold, they'll be able to stick it together and hopefully improve that defense. The baseball team has been having some issues too, especially with the health of some of the pitchers. Yeah, a freak accident on Friday. Taylor Bloom struck with a ball in warm-up, so he's unable to make his start there. And then Saturday, Tyler Bloom was pulled after only one inning. Those are really the one and two for the Terps. So if they're out going forward, the pitching staff was already really underarmed beforehand. It'll be interesting to see how they can adapt. So which team do you guys think is primed for more success in the future? Well, the softball team right now has to overcome a pretty tough schedule. Because of weather and other scheduling conflicts, they're about to play their third doubleheader in just about a week tomorrow when they take on Rutgers. So once the offense gets going and, like I said, they fix those defensive mistakes, they could probably get a lot more wins. To counter Zach, baseball has the potential. It's all there. The lineup is very strong one through nine, and the pitching staff can be dominant at times. But it's a tough Big Ten schedule, so they really have to figure out and click soon if they want to compete. Thanks, Zach and Ryan. Micaiah, back to you. Thanks, Annabelle. Baseball and softball are really struggling right now, but one Maryland club that is not the women's lacrosse team. The Terps took on Ohio State and hit the ground running, scoring 11 goals in the first half, beating Ohio State 20-5, to their largest margin of victory in the year 2018. But the big story here, Megan Whittle, who was there and scored three goals against the Buckeyes, and she became the all-time scoring leader in the program, and in this highlight video, a few familiar faces say congrats. Megan Whittle, congratulations on breaking the record for career goals here at the University of Maryland. I'm so proud of you and proud to have been part of your journey and watch you grow as a player. Keep doing what you're doing. You make all of us alums and coaches proud. Go Terps. Congratulations, Megan Whittle. What an accomplishment. I could have seen this coming four years ago when you stepped foot into College Park. 
Uh, it's been such an honour and a privilege getting to see you score goal after goal en route to breaking this Maryland goals record. Best news for Terp fans is you're not done yet. Keep putting them away. The women's lacrosse team will be ending their regular season at the end of April. They have been having a great season, but this time they missed out on the top five. Yeah, it was a tough list to crack this week. A lot of great plays from Terps all around. But let's get this show on the road. Starting with number five, Connor Kelly finds Bubba Fairman, who spins away from the defender and fires it to the back of the net. At number four, we have softball, Hannah Eslick. She comes in on a pinch hit. She nearly goes yard. This triple off the wall gives Maryland three runs. Eslick motors into third. She's going crazy. The Terps tie the game versus Indiana. And football is back for number three. Anthony McFarland takes it to the right side, finds a hole, and breaks free. Huge game for the redshirt freshman, showing off his explosiveness during the red-white game. We are heading back to lacrosse for number two. Tim Rotans gets around defenders to hit this bounce shot that broke the tie with Rutgers late in the game. And here we go, your number one play of the week. Marcus Lewis picks off Tyler DeSue. He takes this one 43 yards all the way back for the score. And now, women's lacrosse missed out on the top plays, but one player gets the full spotlight as this week's Terp of the Week. Megan Whittle dominated this week against Ohio State. The senior attacker finished with three goals on six shots, but not only that, her first goal was number 268, breaking the tie, giving her the most goals in Maryland women's lacrosse history. What an accomplishment there for the senior. Really impressive stuff. One Terp also trying to accomplish Hughes' feat, DJ Moore. He's expected to go early in the NFL draft this month. The only question is, where will he end up? Our Ryan Homers may have the answer. Thanks for that, Micaiah, and welcome into another What the Sports Roundtable. Today, I'm Ryan Homler, and we're here to talk about one of the greatest Maryland football prospects to come out of this school in a while. That's, of course, DJ Moore. I'm joined by three panelists who are just incredibly handsome. They're also very intelligent, and we're going to talk about Moore's potential in the NFL. Let's meet those analysts. First, next to me is just the most incredibly handsome person you'll ever meet. I mean, I'm just starstruck next to this guy. He's so intelligent, too. Ryan Homler. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Super excited to be here. And by the way, you look pretty good, too. And next to him, we have, of course, the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, Ryan Homler. Sup? And last but not least, we have, well, I guess entertaining would be the right word to describe this guy. He's kind of a head case. We love him anyway, Ryan Homler. Ahem, <clears throat> Ryan. Ryan. Huh, what? Dude, sorry, I'm just, I'm like sending a really important text, just give me a second. Damn, shoddy, you is fine. Okay, I'm good to go, I'm good to go. Okay, let's move on to the topics. DJ Moore is a projected first round pick in a lot of mock drafts. Where do you guys see him going? You know what, Ryan? I'd have to say the Panthers at this point. Norv Turner was at his pro day. They have a pick in the late 20s, and he could make an instant impact on that offense with Cam Newton at quarterback. Ryan, it's actually embarrassing how wrong you are. You could not be more wrong. He's clearly going to the Patriots. They literally just traded for the 23rd overall pick and got Brandon Cooks. That literally screams DJ Moore, you are an idiot. Nah, man, I mean, I'm just chilling. I'm not, I'm not really doing much. Ryan, what's your take? I don't know. I'm at some stupid thing right now. I don't really know what's going on. Ryan, your take, please. What? Uh, guys, like, I'm in the middle of a phone call. Maybe the Cowboys he goes to? I don't really know, and I don't really care. Yeah, sorry. I don't know what that was all about. Okay, moving on. Just how great can DJ Moore be in the NFL? Ryan, just another great question. And might I add, you just look incredibly handsome today, like over the top beautiful. Oh, right back at you, good looking. You know, talking about Moore though, he really has all the skills. The sky is really the limit for this receiver, not only to be a number one option for quarterbacks, but to even be a pro bowler. I think his NFL career is gonna be great and very long. You stole my answer. What? I mean, we can have the same answer. If it's right, it's right. I'm not trying to argue with you or anything, man. All right, you know what? That's it, man. You've been stealing my thunder since the moment we got in here. You got the first chair, you took all the hair gel, even ate all the donuts. Like, what is wrong with you? Man, I'm just here to talk about DJ Moore, and there were no donuts before, so I actually have no idea what you ate. But if I could just get back to DJ Moore real quick in his NFL career. You know what? 
Oh, I've had it up to here with you. Get over here, you ugly little man. We have the same face and body, man. I have no idea what you're talking about. Babe, babe, one second. Hey, dude, I gotta get a video off. of these two idiots fighting. It's it's the funniest it's thing I've ever seen. World yeah. star. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, that'll do it for us here. NFL Draft is April 26th. Should be an exciting time for the Terp. Back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> well, I can. I have to say, I think I agree with Ryan number two. Yeah, you know, but I think Ryan number three got a few good points in there. But I guess we'll have to wait to see where DJ Moore goes in the draft later this month. Well, that'll do it for this edition of the Left Bench TV. Make sure you to keep up with all of our trip coverage over on this, our social media accounts at the Left Bench TV on Twitter and the Left Bench on Facebook. And don't forget to check out our websites theleftbench.com for more coverage of Maryland athletics. For Nolan Gelbert and our Left Bench TV crew here in College Park, I'm Makaya Cherry. Thanks for watching.